In this tutorial, we're going to talk about some of the basic features of the rotary software for Carverite Designer 2. When you start a new project, you have the option of, of creating a regular board size for doing flat planar carves, or now there's a tab for a rotary project as well. And in here, you can type in the dimensions of the project that you're going to be turning. So if you've got a piece of wood selected already, you will want to tell it what the diameter of that piece is and the length of that. And this diameter, project diameter, is generally referring to the inner diameter of whatever board. So if it's not round already, you'll want to be able to measure so you know what the inside diameter of that piece is. So let's go ahead and set this to uh, 3 inches by 12 inches and then the part off diameter at 0.5. And the part off diameter is going to be talking about the uh, diameter of the pieces that, that hold on to the carving that, that's coming out. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. And I'm going to keep my measurement in inches. So when the project opens up, you've got a split screen now. So you've got a flat board here that you'll actually lay out your pieces on. And then we've got a round turn piece here that actually shows what what our rotary car is going to look like. And here it's showing the part off. So this little angle part here is a part off. So it gives a keep out zone that's automatic. The jig itself has some hardware that you attach the stock to. And so it's automatically set what the keep out areas of that are. So it won't allow you to carve into those areas. And the part off here is just so that you've got, it's kind of like a tab in a way it holds whatever you're going to carve in this area it holds it on either end with a uh, certain diameter and you can change that diameter depending on what your project is so laying out projects on the rotary is the same as laying out projects for a flat board you're going to put your pieces on the flat side here and then they will show up and rendered on the rotary side so you are not actually going to work in this window, you're going to work in this window. So if you select a pattern, just as you would for a flat board, you can drop it on the board and it shows up here on uh, your rotary window. There's a couple new tools that show up in your menu. One of them is this eye, which the eye allows you to click anywhere on this flat board and it'll reorient the rotary board to show you that area of the view. So if I want to center right here, it'll give me that, that centered view. All right, we have another tool that's called Flatten. And Flatten actually will try to take whatever your pattern is and put it on the board flat rather than wrapping it around as a rotational piece. So it'll actually add a curve to it that counteracts the curving of the board. Now it's limited in size and what you can do because the depending on the size of your diameter, it can only flatten so much. Uh, so, But in certain situations, it can be really useful if you want to put a flat emblem on the side of a curved piece. You've got the ability to do that. You can even take regions and carve those out and make them flat so that you've kind of got, you know, a boxed out area or something if you want to put text on it or something like that. Okay, let's lay out a few other things here and show off some of the other tools. I'll just draw a region a rectangle and I can position it and I can center it and so pretty much when you're laying things out here it's going to be just like you would lay out any other flat project except uh, it's going to be displaying over here as well and showing you what it looks like as a uh, turned piece. And so you'll notice now, just by dropping a region on there, it's carving that around and recessing that area in. 
and you can see the part off area here is it's got a diameter and we had set that to half an inch so it's got this half an inch hold on tab there at the end so we can do pretty much use all the same kind of tools that we would have used in project designer for anything else so let's let's use a, a dome here you get this nice kind of curve shape and and by changing your depth and your height you can do the same kind of things that you would with a, a regular design but it's going to be reflected over here let's invert that and we end up with this really nice tapered cylinder and let's throw some patterns on it and we'll just grab some patterns from the basic pattern set how about just a leaf or something here and we can make things very decorative let me copy and paste that take that center off and we'll move this one off to the side here and mirror it so I've got three in a row here and so they actually wrap around this little cylinder shape here so if you're making you know a table leg or some kind of candlestick or other decorative item different sections of a cane you can easily decorate those those pieces can also use all the, the same merging styles that we would use to actually make that so it, it conforms and follows the curve of that if you want to and, and different heights to shallow it up or make it taller any of the effects that you want to you want to apply to it and you've got this real-time preview here that actually will show you what the end piece is going to be. You can also use any of the, the regular kind of drawing tools or even uh, some of the, the vector capabilities. So if I wanted to put a line across this, and then I can apply a bit to it. The 90 degree V bit. And it gives me this nice, really crisp V'd edge on there. Now, when you're dealing with V bits with the rotary, since the V bits are so short, if your rotary project is smaller than three inches in diameter you won't be able to reach that so you can do things like select that region and that line in your pattern list group those select that pattern make a pattern from it give it a name and actually save that as a pattern in your pattern library and let's just scroll down and find it there's round one and drop that on the board. And then I can delete that region and that V carve and just put this in its place and I get the same effect. Note here is you'll see has the pattern on the ends here isn't quite matching up. Go ahead and center that so that I know I've got it positioned there but this is actually an effect of the feather. You take the feather off and you turn the floor feather off and you can get those seams to disappear. So now the seam is gone. I get the same effect that I had before, but it's all made into one pattern now. So if you do want to do some V carving type functions, you can actually just make it into a pattern and then you can still get the effect, but it'll actually raster out all is a pattern rather than having to change a bit. You can also use the other functions such as the texture tools. 
So I'll just draw another region down here. And let's go ahead and select our texture tool. And let's click the horizontal waves. That's just a, an easy one to show off. And you get this really nice ridged round area. So, you know, another way if you're doing decorative legs, carved out legs. And so even though you've only got 13 inches, you actually can make these in sections and then you can assemble, you know, an entire table leg together uh, made up of several different decorative sections that taper down to a, a foot. You can also use text. So I can select the text tool and I can find a font that I like. Type in whatever it is that I want. So that text will then show up on here as well. And wrapping around the piece. So you can do some really, really neat things. A lot of very powerful functions. When you're finished with your project and you're going to upload, you want to double check to make sure that you have a part off diameter that is reasonable for the project you're working on. Uh, this one, we could actually change that part off diameter to be larger since our project doesn't carve too deep in this particular one so that it doesn't have to reach down so far and it just gives us an indication of where the end of our design is so when we go to cut off our excess we've we've got a good starting point there the other thing that we'll want to do is we will want to select everything and make sure we set bit optimization to best now in some cases you you may not necessarily have to do best you could get away with medium but the way that the carving works the deeper it goes the finer the resolution gets and the more chance of, of you having issues with chip out if you're not using bit optimization so bit optimization is a, is a must with all rotary carves uh, but you do have some some playing you can do usually between medium and best is what I use and most of the time I just set everything to best and, and it comes out pretty good. So that's a just a simple example of the features that you can do and it's, it's pretty endless the possibilities. Once you have your carving or your design finished uh, you'll want to save it and upload to your memory card. When we do the upload The default bit for doing rotary carves is going to be the 1 8 inch long carving bit. That bit is uh, long enough and strong enough to be able to handle the entire diameter range of the rotary jig. Uh, you can substitute other bits in, but they are going to be limited by how long they can reach and limited by its strength. So if you do choose to use the 1 16th inch long carving bit, you will need to make it on best or optimal or you run the risk of it messing up during the, the carve. Now with the uh, eighth inch long carving bit the normal setting can be run easily without any issue. So just like uploading any other project you name your your carve and you can look at your time estimate. Now the time estimate is based on the piece already being round so if you're putting in a square piece or you know another shape other than you know your perfectly round diameter it is going to take a little bit longer as the the machine uh, has to carve away that excess material in order to get down to the shape the diameter with which your project is has been determined down at the bottom of the screen here it tells you required diameter three inches so if you forgot during the course of designing your project, it's telling you down at the bottom of the screen, you're, you're gonna need a three inch piece for this project. So once you've got your settings, hit upload and you're done.
in, in the next couple of tutorials, we will cover some of the more advanced features, the 3D modeling suite, and even the STL importing of 3D models to carve all the way around.